Hare Krishna.
Hare Krishna. So thank you so much for joining. Uh, as Priti Vodan Maharaj will be joining shortly. So please, I hope uh, that we all have studied something that the Maharaj was telling us. Because it's a very important topic that we were discussing today. That the Shiksha Guru and the Diksha Guru should be able to see one way. It's a very complex topic. और ये महाराज से सुनने में ये हमारे जो डाउट है सारे के सारे क्लियर हो जाएंगे कि हाउ शुड वी सी शिक्षा गुरु एंड दीक्षा गुरु एज वन रॉनी प्रभु यू मेड एनी नोट्स येस्टरडे कैन यू डू ऑन द स्क्रीन शेयर यस प्रभु टू मिनट्स प्रभु ओके so apna please uh, ask questions agar hamara koi bhi doubt hai especially jaise main bata raha hu ki ye ki kaise hum shikshya guru ko dekhein aur kaise shikshya guru ko dekhein aur kaisa hamara jo bhav hai andar se wo dono ke liye same hona chahiye kyunki hum logon ka jo zyada mahatva rehta hai zyada tar wo diksha guru ke sath rehta hai aur aur wo hona bhi chahiye there is no doubt but uh, question is ki Yeah, our relationship with our Shiksha Gurus also should be in a similar mood. At least internally, we should feel the same. Oh, Maharaj. Oh, Maharaj is here. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanna Pranam. Okay, can you hear? Yes, yes, very clearly. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. I'm trying it today from computer. So, oh, okay. I'm not sure if it works the same. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Okay. So, And what are we doing today? Uh, regarding that Shiksha Guru and Diksha Guru Maharaj yesterday. Right. So, so are we reading more or we have questions? So one, uh, Maharaj, I requested uh, Rani Prabhu, he had made the notes yesterday. He's very expert in making notes. So uh, just, to, just to get a refresh what we did yesterday and uh, uh, so that we can those who have come today, who were not there yesterday, Maharaj, they can get from where we are starting. Yeah. So, Rani Prabhu, can you just read the notes? Okay, Prabhu. Just read them aloud, or you can do screen share also if you like. Whatever. Uh, is it visible? Yes. Okay. So, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. So, Hare Krishna. So we can go through the notes. For yesterday. Uh, so we started that only through the mercy of the spiritual master in Krishna one can cross over the birth of ocean, ocean of birth and death. And uh, a spiritual master only can lead one, a lead a disciple to, from Shraddha to Prem. And uh, when one, when a disciple comes from Anarth Nivriti to Nishtha, right, he is able to uh, perceive instructions of super soul in Krishna. And uh, then he is able to progress very fast. And uh, we have to understand and accept the spiritual master. And for that, we have to be very grateful to our spiritual master. And also, we, uh, like as you iterated that, we have to understand about the process of Tadviddhi Pranipat and Pariparashni in a Sevya, Bhagavad Gita 4.34. So we have to inquire with uh, sincerity. So uh, then we discussed about how do we know uh, what to inquire. So, and for that, uh, you mentioned that we get inspiration through our seva and then we get answers and then apply those things um, in our service and uh, based on national culture and uh, and then we get that realization we get more and more realization and this uh, this cycle of uh, inquiring and then applying and then doing seva this is a cycle which we have to keep continuing and it's like a constant progression and uh, and then we can realize more and more. 
and uh, the spiritual master when we follow this process then spiritual master then will reveal uh, the confidential inform uh, knowledge to us and then we will be able to understand what is there in shri propad books and uh, and the shiksha actually so it's a constant progress and uh, it goes around it's like that so and then we also discuss that how a spiritual master and disciple examine each other so who is the spiritual master he should follow so like a disciple can ask whom uh, who who should be my spiritual master so so what most important was that um, that uh, the one who is going to accept a spiritual master uh, must be willing to take uh, to follow his instructions very sincerely and carefully and uh, that is the first thing and it is the most important part and uh, and we should not look that oh this guru has so many disciples and he is very popular and like that and we should also go for that spiritual master or he go, gives very good classes or and like that and uh, we have to something we have to find something which is common uh, for uh, between both of us which we from which we can start our sambandh and uh, and based on that we approach uh, the spiritual master and then he engages us uh, in some seva and uh, and with that seva and uh, with those instructions uh, when we follow that sincerely our heart gets purified and uh, and when the when that anartha nivritti stage uh, we are into that and our anartha goes away and then we are we are not in in a in a mood that oh i don't want to do this seva or i, I am uh, particular for that seva so then we can uh, follow the instructions of a spiritual master more uh, carefully and without any discrimination and uh, so i have written that shri propad also did the same thing and looked uh, who was good at what and engaged them so like uh, we also say that dove telling our um, uh, talents into the service of the spiritual master and service of krishna so and uh, so and then you also uh, told us a story of a guru in the middle of himalayas who Uh, and a dis- and a aspiring disciple approached that guru and after uh, and he one one year after another he he instructed his disciple that uh, build this temple on this top and build this temple on that top and uh, and uh, after so many years and then he um, he accepted that a uh, disciple that yes now you are ready so that is like a relationship between guru and disciple and that uh, the disciple always has to be submissive and always assured uh, uh uh respect the instructions and uh, accept the instructions and follow the instructions and then we also discussed about the grihastha disciple that uh, accepting a grihastha guru is uh, good but not for nastik brahmachari and uh, for them it is better to accept a guru in sanyas ashram and uh, it is false that a grihas guru is less qualified than a sanyas guru it's not like that so but only because of the social order and the social scene that uh, it is recommended that uh, but otherwise there is there is no such di- uh, difference or the di- discrimination between you know like a guru in grihas and the guru in sanyas order and both are uh, and and then we discussed about adiksha guru and shiksha guru both are honored equally and uh, diksha guru gives mantra and uh, for a diksha guru is usually the one who is the most prominent shiksha guru uh, and shiksha guru is teaches about uh, krishna and he is also helping us in uh, establishing our relationship and he we have to develop respect for both of them equally and both are on the same platform we have to be very grateful to them and uh, we discussed that there are like three gurus one is diksha guru shiksha guru and the chaitya guru and uh, and ours like iskon is a shiksha sampradaya and uh, like that a person uh, okay shiksha prabhupad books instructions are for everyone yeah so uh, we also mentioned that in shiksha prabhupad books the instructions are for everyone it could be uh, it is for even for kanishta madhyam and uttam for everyone there are instructions and uh, and by respecting the spiritual master we get their mercy and then we proceed to the next level and eventually the highest level and then we can understand the chaitya guru and we can get the instructions directly from krishna and the chaitya guru 
the greatest offense comes from guru aparad most uh, difficult to overcome is to be ungrateful towards one's guru uh, both diksha and shiksha and um, so responsibilities of guru and uh, so we discussed that he helps us go through a uh, proper treatment so like uh, we being in a diseased condition and he gives us the treatment and uh, to cure us and uh, it's also because of his affection towards us not 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 for anything else but he because he's affectionate and he cares for us and he knows what is the right treatment for us to give and, and that's why he gives us um, and then we discussed about the story of a man on a deathbed and and like that and um, and because uh, the man was ailing that he never never got correction uh, from his auntie and so so is like should not be our situation that uh, uh, that it's not that we should be um, sad about getting getting corrections or like that uh, and then we had question and answers like how to overcome and not get fixated in diksha guru and uh, and how to respect our, our shiksha guru as well equally and uh, so we have to develop and practice shikshashtakam and i will just go quickly and uh, respect every living entity we have to become dhir with proper attitude you can give respect and develop and to become humble and um, <clears throat> i think that would be it thank you ramesh prabhu you know no minute means sara kuch hame revise kara diya so at least we know where we were doing uh, so maharaj we we just want to request you if you can just repeat little bit maharaj on seeing the you know because the question uh, comes in many people's mind that how we see our path pradarshak guru and uh, shiksha guru and diksha guru and many times also confusion whom should we call a diksha a shiksha guru you know like that so if you can start little bit by that maharaj then we can open for more question answers okay so uh so shiksha guru because we are the shiksha sampradaya so basically now every guru which we consider would be shiksha guru even diksha guru is the shiksha guru but on top of that then he is also given the diksha hmm hey hello delta ye ye prabhu are gisha can you see One second, Rani Prabhu, can you put mute everyone? Uh, yes. Sorry, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj, please. Yeah. So, the uh, shiksha is the important element here. Now, what does it mean like to be a guru? Now, somebody you know, may give the instructions, right? But there is also the the consciousness or the the uh, mm, yeah the consciousness with which then he is giving the instructions and what the instructions are so if we are talking about uh, say like a on the material platform then yes he is also if if they are meant to to uh, benefit us say like no there may be some business guru he in, instructs you how to do your business so you get more money so you may have some respect for that person because he is helping you and now you can say eventually that also helps you with your financial situation and therefore you can pursue spiritual you no know, progress so but it's indirect and it's so he is not he is giving you some shiksha but on a material platform that's one level and then he he requires some respect but uh, not as a person who is giving you spiritual instruction a person who is directly giving you instructions so that you from that directly progress in your spiritual life then he has to be respected as your shiksha guru now then uh, the uh, the level of his respect also comes based on how much affectionate or his consciousness and the affection which he is you now having towards uh, the person he is instructing so somebody is instructing you okay you do something you no know, you uh chant 16 rounds 
or how you chant the 16 rounds. You now you read Bhagavatam. And when the person, actually he is, uh, his purity is higher. He is instructing you for his, for your benefit. So naturally there is a closer relationship and the relationship also requires then uh, the uh, Hare Krishna, you. Yes, Maharaj, we can hear yes, Maharaj. Okay, I just, the screens are changing here somehow. Okay. If somebody, if somebody joins or somebody switch on, then the screen changes, Maharaj. Oh, okay, okay. All right. So, the, uh, what was it? Uh, Yeah, the, it's a relationship. So based on that relationship, then you are also then uh, going to take the instructions with certain weight. So you have a trust, you have faith in the person. If the person instructs you, then you will take the instruction more seriously. If there is the, the relationship is not established, then you know, some way it has to be established in like a person, like a sadhu. You don't know him, but he has a purity. And he then uh, instructs you. So then you may have the faith because he is just impressed. He, is, he impressed you. He's uh, very uh, pure. In his, in his habits, he, he is uh, something which you naturally uh, trust because purity is the force, right? So then uh, you will be able to take it, follow it, and because you follow it, like from the doctor, we had, said, we had made the, uh, the analogy. So then you follow and it will work for you. So the relationship is important element in in the whole instruction so you have a faith you have trust in the person who is uh, instructing you he is uh, he is on a, he's a elevated devotee so the instructions will be easier for you to follow and he will be also you now the instructions will work better way because you will follow them. You will be having the enthusiasm and determination to follow. So that you can say that he is instructing you and you are, you are uh, following the instructions. Now, if the, the relationship goes deep, so that's generally that you can say the most prominent Shiksha Guru and he may become then your Diksha Guru and the relationship just continue as uh, no, part of just develops like a father and son. So again, there is the affection. So based on the affection, then the relationship deepens and then you will be having more trust, taking it and then Pranipata Pariprasna Sevaya, then it's easier to follow and therefore the instruction will be then uh, uh, having more effect, the result of it. And the effect here, we are talking realizations. That's what we are looking for. So, then uh, if uh, somebody instructs you, is instructing us, and then uh, we don't necessarily have faith in the person, there is something which maybe the purity is not uh, as as high. So therefore, then uh, we, uh, that our relationship is not on uh, such a high platform. So then we may follow partially, we may not follow. It depends on how we, how we, how we view the relationship and then uh, sometimes uh, 
yeah, well, depends on the on the situation. Then uh, we will be uh, we will be responsible for that we do follow or don't follow. Now, like example, so somebody you now who who uh, means it well for us, but we have no relationship. So you are, uh, and you don't necessarily trust the person in the beginning. So he instructs in something. Then you may not follow the instruction of the person, but you are not getting any reaction basically for not following, but it may come to some uh, realizations that later on you may figure out actually, you know, what the person was saying, then he was right. I should follow that instruction. So there will be some inspiration. It may come with delay, but you followed it and then you will get the benefit. Now, when you are getting the benefit, then it will be beneficial for you that you give recognition to the person who instructed you. Like we were talking about the Droha Maharaj and his mother. So his mother directly didn't give him the instruction, now how should he do, what should he do? But then she instructed him in the principle, you should seek the Supreme Lord. And in that, then unspoken was, you should seek also your guru, who will show you then how to achieve the Supreme Lord. So then he did that. And then because he did it, it was because of the, of her, the Vartma Prayashaka Guru. So she was not direct, uh, no, no, Diksha Guru, but she gave the first instruction. And because of that only, he was able to achieve the highest level. So then he gave the recognition you know, to her. Because of her, it happened. So it's about the recognition. Seeing you now who is who is uh, and who leads us to what, how, and because we got the instruction, then we got the the higher realizations. So then we should be just very grateful and willing to give the recognition and respect the person. Give you not know, being grateful to the person, and that comes again in the depending of the relationship. Now, because of the relationships, this is what Krishna appreciates the most. Because we are talking about the relationships not among devotees. So then, how do we express our gratitude not to the person, to the Shiksha Guru, to Diksha Guru? Then, no, that can come many ways. Like Rupa Goswami, then, no, he describes you know, the six exchanges. Darati Pratik Dhinati Guhumati Pichati Bhungte Bojayate. So, and we can see that basically that's what's happening. Now, you have uh, your, your uh, Diksha Guru or Shiksha Guru, and you may give some uh, gift, you receive some gifts, you inquire from him, and then you, know, you also hear from him. And you, know, you invite sadhus for prasad, if your Guru Maharaj comes, then you will take very nice, nice care of him, right? And if he invites you somewhere for some yatra, then you would be you know, gladly you know, taking it and following. So the, ex the exchanges are happening. But the exchanges then, they are the ones who, they deepen the relationships. And because of that, then you know, following the instructions becomes uh, more elevating and thus more rewarding. Rewarding means again the realization. Is that? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, yes. It is, it is here, Maharaj. So, Hare Krishna, devotees. So, before I ask more questions, uh, please, if anybody has question, then please raise your hand on the, uh, on the Zoom app only. And let us know if you have any clarity, you want to ask any question, because it's a very important question that how to respect our Shiksha Gurus properly 
and uh, uh, you know so if you have questions then please ask questions maraj one question has come okay this, this is from jk das prabhu is saying maharaj what shila prabhupad in his con is asking prabhupad prabhupad position maharaj that how is prabhupad position is he our diksha guru or shiksha guru or both see the uh, position of the of the shila prabhupad he is the founder acharya so his his uh, position is the the acharya founder acharya of the sampradaya so there is only one so he is he is uh, beyond that capacity you can that you can just you no know, name him as a shiksha guru diksha guru so he is a founder acharya and he is giving the shiksha in his books to be followed by any further shiksha gurus or diksha gurus in the sampradaya so everybody follows his teachings so that is his position so now we have to now to actually get to that uh, his realizations or to his teachings we have to approach then uh, the guru now diksha guru and shiksha guru now we want the shiksha we want to understand the shiksha of shri prabhupada so through shiksha of of gurus or of a guru then we will be able to follow in the footsteps and thus like guru chakshush we will be able to see the proper proper you no know, understanding and uh, proper application of these teachings now diksha guru his uh, specific um, duty extra duty would be but it's not limited only to him but mainly come on that he also oversees the disciple directly that he actually knows what he is doing he that what he is doing right what he is doing wrong and corrects him so the shiksha guru may do that the diksha guru he should be doing it so it will be uh very difficult and actually you can say impossible to really start reading prabhupada's books and saying that okay now i understand everything without any guidance i have heard that there was one one case one person who was uh, reading and he finished reading shrimad bhagavatam and then now his conclusion was okay after reading this i understand the supreme lord is shiva so how did he come to that conclusion it's very difficult to comprehend but it seems like possible so we have to then understand what the teachings actually are now how do we know we have to some we have to some uh, some feedback some verification so it comes from the the guru shiksha guru yes he, he in some aspects he is doing but then now the diksha guru he should be training the disciple either he does it himself or he asks somebody of his senior disciples to to train so how to dress up now how to to, to put the lag on you know, which song to sing when to sing how to sing how to behave so all these things then uh, somehow they naturally happen but then this is actually the responsibility of the diksha guru so then the see he sees that the disciple does things properly for that so he receiving that then he is again the relationship deepens and that's why the surrender is greater so uh yeah and then through through that he can actually focus on the shiksha which is the most important thank you maharaj yes jake das is your answer question answer sorry bhai you can't hear me 
but I think you clarified, Maharaj. You, you clarified. Uh, okay, Prabhu. Okay, okay. okay. You fi you fine, Jagadish Prabhu. Uh, okay, Prabhu ji. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Our next question has come from Megha Mataji. She is saying, "I have a question from yesterday." No, sorry, Mataji. One question is there first. I have a question that ev is everyone who is helping us in our spiritual growth is Shiksha Guru. Well, okay. As we were saying that when they are instructing us now in the spiritual science, and we, it's for our benefit. It's out of out of affection. Then yes, now the person is the Shiksha Guru. But as we were mentioning before, our relationship with that immediate person, you no, know, may you know the relationship may not be immediately like a so so great. So we may omit that. We may just uh, not follow, or we may not trust him. So he is a shiksha guru. He is giving shiksha, but we don't follow. For example, again, like no, no, your mother instructs you that uh, oh it's outside is cold you should wear a sweater but you being you no know, like uh, maybe like a little punk oh i don't want to wear a sweater so you don't wear you get sick you get cold and because of that then you realize that actually your mother was right so then later on you, you no know, refer to that you you get back to and then you see the mother out of affection she was trying you to protect you but you did not want to hear, therefore you got sick. So the next time, it's likely that you are going to be follow her, following her. So that's uh, you will come to it, but you will now some consequences will be there. Like we have now levels of how we can acquire knowledge and apply it so then we get to the realization so one is by hearing so then when you hear you accept it you follow you get the realization then it's the safest and more it's a painless if you cannot accept it by hearing then by seeing so you see like we were you can you can now uh, See it on the on the on the fire. Your mother tells you fire is hot, don't touch it. Okay, you don't touch it. You don't get any. You don't get burned, but you will not touch fire in your life because you know that uh, it's hot because your mother said so. If you still don't believe, then uh, you may see. Well, okay, I did not touch my the, the fire, but somebody else did, and the person who did it got burned. So I think it's right. So I should not touch it. So you may get some little consequences for that. Now, as for that, uh, who touched it? Maybe your friend, and then uh, you feel also the pain for him. So it's it's uh, not as painless as the, you know, by hearing. And if you still don't believe, and you may think, well. Uh, yeah, it burned him, but it doesn't burn me. I'm special. So you put your hand into the fire, you get burned, and you realize, wow, okay, so it also applies to me. So my mother was right, so now I realized, and I have to follow the instruction what she's giving. So we have to see that uh, we, we try to apply the essence of the the shiksha and then based on that then we see that who is giving us the shiksha he's a shiksha guru but the guru part then happens when there is some relationship so that somebody comes you no know, and you no know, on the street and tells us just chant Hare krishna so the person is giving some shiksha but I just get lost. Go. I don't want to see you. So you are not accepting it. There is no like commitment. But then later on, you try and you get some realizations. Then you start looking for the person. And you are you now trying to see, oh, 
you, you asked me to chant Hare Krishna, I didn't believe you, I didn't know what it was, but I tried, and then believe me, I, I got some nice, great realizations. Can you tell me more? Can you, can you guide me? Can you do something? So that person actually, no, he is willingly accepting the person's instructions to be followed. So you can say that that person is your Shiksha Guru. So the, the point of, real, the point of uh, relationship must be there. Yeah? Thank you, Maharaj. So main thing, Maharaj, what we understand is their relationship means that the Pariprashtena and Sevya and also the Pari Pratina, that there is a surrender, that we feel what we have been instructed or told, we, we feel from within to follow it. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, this question has come from Anita Madhaji. She's saying, Hare Krishna Maharaj, what is the difference between a mentor and a Shiksha Guru? Between? A mentor and a Shiksha Guru. Now, if the mentor, he is giving us spiritual instructions, we have some relationship with the person and we practice the relationship then based on the then, and we accept that, we follow that, we have trust in him and he is helping us in our spiritual life. He is our Shiksha Guru. And as you say, this is the, if the mentor is your mentor how to you know, make money, then he is not your Shiksha Guru. If the mentor, you no, know, he is supposed to instruct in some spiritual, you no, know, spiritual uh, instruction, but instead he's giving you some like managerial things. He's telling you not to do this, do that, but doesn't explain and you don't feel close relationship, then you no, know, he, he's giving some instructions, but he's not actually like a Shiksha Guru. Thank you, Maharaj. Also, I think this, uh, all these English terms confuses us, a teacher, mentor, counselor. Yeah, yes. Know, Maharaj, at the end of the day, they, they're all giving Shiksha. Yes, they are giving Shiksha. And according to the level of, of uh, your trust and your relationship, you accept it. Then you accept it, you apply it, you get the realization from it. Then as a feedback, you should see that you are now, now, being grateful to the person that he instructed you and you followed it. Then it's complete the shiksha. So, Maharaj, what um, we are understanding again and again is that the whole thing is not about a formal relationship. It is a matter of heart connection that whom we feel if he, if he tells us something, we are willing to follow and that, that devotee is helping us in our spiritual life and we are doing some seva, or at least we wish to do some seva. And uh, uh, in that manner, the relationship will mature. Well, that, that's what the guru you know, should be doing. He sees the disciple, right? In case of like the Diksha guru, you can say more than Shiksha guru. He, he's, he is having some inspiration you know, to, to draw the Krishna consciousness from within the heart of the person. So if you just deal or manage a platform, then you cannot say that you really care about the person. And then because of that, the relationship will be very shallow. So you may maintain some level of organization or somewhere, but if it's not heart to heart, then it will be very difficult to follow that and therefore to get some realization from it. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, one question has come. This is from Amit Prabhu. He's saying, is it necessary to have a Shiksha Guru uh, who's a disciple of our Diksha Guru? Dik uh, Shiksha Guru? That he should be a disciple of our Diksha Guru. No, no, that, that's nothing like that. Yes. In ISKCON, we have something like that. When you say Shiksha Guru, so they talk, they talk also about like a, some formal Shiksha Guru. So the formal Shiksha Guru, no, it's a... Uh, it's uh, somebody then who is giving you instructions maybe like a prominently 
And at that time, you should be asking permission from a Diksha Guru that the person becomes like your former Shiksha Guru. But it's, it's, uh, it's not like a anything compulsory, it's more kind of like etiquette. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, Hare Krishna, does anybody has any other question? Rani Prabhu, you have a question? I can't hear you. Uh, Minakshi Mataji has a question, Prabhu. Okay. Hare Krishna, Minakshi Mataji. Is she online? I can't hear her. Yes, she is online. Uh, Sarah Prabhu has a question in the meantime. Yes, Sarah Prabhu, Prabhu please go ahead. Hare Krishna. Mataji is there. Okay. Um, now my Mataji. voice is audible. Yes, Mataji. Yes. Uh, Hare Krishna, uh, Maharaj Lanbat Pranam. Hare Krishna. Uh, Maharaj, like when we start preaching and some of the devotees start asking or just want to know how can we search for a Diksha Guru or how can we approach a Diksha Guru so they get some confused. So how can we guide them in that respect? First of all, then they should not be too much in hurry. Just for some time, you know, see what's happening and you know, see the situation. Just chant the holy name, you know, be in part of the you know, Harinam Sankirtan. And so the Sadhu Sangha. Then when it comes as a need, then you can start then uh, looking for, or you can encourage them then, okay, to see, to listen lectures from you know, various uh, gurus, to see you know, what they do, their activities. And you know, through the disciples, then uh, may, they may come to some contact start communicating and then based on that then they may start following maybe make some more like a you no know, specific contact you no know, ask maybe visit ask some questions but it comes always to the point that before you no know, accepting the the shelter of that uh, guru as a diksha guru they must be very confident they can follow the, his instructions, whatever it will be. They should not jump into it. Now, like we were saying, just because he has many disciples, so he must be like, great. So I want him. And no, then after that, I finish, oh, he's asking me to do something which I don't like to do. No, so uh, it, it becomes very dangerous position for the disciple. So there must be the communication or some way or other. Either you know, through the Guru, or if the Guru has many disciples, then so through, through his uh, disciples, senior disciples, you know, to see and to understand the mood. And because of the mood, I like that mood. And because of that, I can surrender. And that's why I can follow. So that, that person will be you know, somebody whom would I would like to follow. But it may take years. And many of the gurus also, they want to see you know, that uh, they are able to instruct the disciple and the disciple is able to follow. So many of them are now very careful you know, not to immediately just uh, encourage them you know, to, to become the disciples. Now, many of the gurus are very, you can say, even discouraging. And then you have to see, you know, if you really want that, then you may have to put a lot of effort to become the disciple of such a guru. Then, uh, yeah, we see, you know, like Bhakti Siranta Prabhupada also didn't have you no know, easy time accepting his guru. It was very difficult so the determination must be there so that's uh, like a test so he does that because he is testing the disciple how serious he is it was uh, previously 
when a, when a child, we are talking about children, would come to Gurukul. So according to the Shastra, the Guru, you now he is supposed to, for one year, test the, test the, the boy. And test, basically, you no, know, he just lets him do only menial services. And, no, no instructions, really, other than that. So, now, if the boy is very sincere, then he will do that. Cleaning, no, sweeping, wiping, no, washing pots, then doing that. And nothing, nothing else. But, when he is sincere, he will do that. Happily, and because of his attitude, then the guru would see and he starts instructing him. So that's what the, the Pranipata Pariprasna Sevaya, what we were talking about. But if the attitude is not there and he is there you know, for a month or like maybe you know, a few days and he's, oh, I'm only washing, but I don't like it, either. I'm going somewhere else. So he will go and nobody is hurt. Right? No. But he will, the guru will not be able to instruct him without him you know, being offensive. And that's why then he will just you know, tell him, sorry, no, I will not be able to accept you. So that's, that's according to the Shastra, how the, how the guru you know, should deal. Now, nowadays, then, uh, it's on the Vedic platform, right? Now we are talking about from the Bhagavad. So anybody can you know, receive the Shiksha, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So it's by the extraordinary mercy of the Vaishnavas that uh, the Vaishnava gurus, they just give the initiation. Now without uh, sometimes even uh, seeing the proper qualification. They are so merciful. But you no, know, sometimes because of that, then uh, the disciples are not being very sincere and because of that they fall down and uh, it becomes you know, extra burden for the guru you know, especially the, the platform because the guru you know, he felt that okay he's trying to give his uh, his mercy he's trying to give you know, to help the person but the person sometimes just uh, disregards that and does something foolish. So, not that the Guru is angry with him, but he, he feels very sad. Like, there was one time, Srila Prabhupada, and he was still in New York, that uh, there was one, one uh, person, uh, he would come, he would be coming for some time, and, you know, after some time, then uh, he just left. He said, I'm leaving. I think maybe he was staying for some time and said, I'm leaving. So, you know, seeing that, and uh, I think Shri Prabhupada at the time, he was actually, you no know, crying. And, you no, know, the disciple of Shri Prabhupada was crying. He said, uh, another person, you no, know, I could not have helped. So, the, the Vaishnava, he is, is very, he feels sad when he cannot help some soul. And we see the preaching of you know, Nityananda Prabhu in Bengal. He would go and he would beg. He would beg uh, the, the people in Bengal, please chant the holy name. But many times he was little like a thrown away out of the house. And that's the Supreme Lord coming to your house, but you no, know, you kick him out. And I don't want to hear this, no. It get lost, no. So, but he wouldn't give, and he would not also have grudge towards them. Or like Jagai Madai. They hurt him. No, they, they cut him. But he is the one who stopped Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from killing them. So, the Supreme Lord, no, he has no any grudge towards us. He is always fully merciful. So, at least that much we have to recognize. And we see like on the Jagai Madai case, they recognized that and immediately they were able to get rid of all their anarthas and that's why they became pure devotees in a moment. So it can happen to anyone. 
as long as we are not holding on our anarthas and we let you know, the holy name purify us. Thank you, Maharaj. So, main thing for us is that we should not push devotees too much for any diksha and everybody has their own journey. And, uh, you know, we should, sometimes we, we get over excited to, to push devotees to take diksha, but we should not do this. And every should, should feel encourage, yeah. encourage, but don't force. Yes. And it also should not be, oh, because you belong to this temple, you have to take initiation from that guru. No, it, it's not like that. It should not be. There should be inspiration. The, the diksha, it's based very much on inspiration. You have to inspire by the person. That's why you will, you will take, nobody should be forced just because you belong to the zone and then, no, you have to do this and that. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, yes, Swarabha Garwal Prabhu, you can ask question. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, we, we can't hear you, Swarabha Garwal. Please be a little louder. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, Dandavat Pranam. Maharaj, uh, like uh, in ISKCON, is it that the Siksha connection should be like for... Hare Gaur? I mean, I mean, but uh, I mean, uh, so that Shiksha Guru is able to give us instructions more prominently. I mean, if, if it is more formal. See, there is nothing like it. It's just a guideline. So, no, there is no, no, like a strict rule, like the, when he is Shiksha Guru and then he's like becomes like a formal Shiksha Guru. And it's not your obligation. It's just an etiquette. So, if there is a person who is inspiring you, you know, on the level of your Diksha Guru, and then you also want to follow his instructions, you can. But out of etiquette, you may also inform you know, your Diksha Guru, you know, and then ask like, for like, permission, just you know, explain. Oh, I'm, I'm working with that person, and the person is really taking care, nice care of me. He's explaining me these things. No, and I, I like his association. So, my Guru Maharaj, would you be you no know, agreeing, you no know, in agreement that uh, I would uh, you no know, spend time with him and then you no know, practice uh, the six kind of exchanges? So like that. There is no like a formal paper there to fill up and no. It, it's it's an etiquette and but. If you get the blessing of your Diksha Guru, that yeah, that person you should spend time more with him, then uh, definitely you have more faith, and therefore, as we were saying, you will be able to apply it you know, more, and your realization will be deeper. So that's why, rather than you no, know, you are following somebody, knowing that uh, the the person he teaches something else than your than your uh, Diksha Guru. So then you don't want to ask because, and you will not be able to get realizations really, because you, you know you are going against you know, his his uh, instructions, and there may be some uh, some uh, doubts, and you don't want to clear them it becomes misgivings, and then you may start committing offenses. So that's that's not good. So therefore, not just that the the uh, uh, just, just agreement or just information or just informing him, it's, it's very sufficient. Thank you, Maharaj. Is it satisfactory, Saurabh Prabhu? So, uh, Maharaj, uh, I mean, in case of Diksha Guru, like Diksha Guru, sorry, in case of Diksha Guru, it is like uh, Diksha Guru gives instruction maybe in a very, say, uh, cutting way in the sense, okay, do this, don't do this, like that. But say, in case of Siksha Guru, uh, I mean, say, when we ask something, so they might not be 
giving in that way they might lead on us okay that it is your choice so in that way if it is more formal then will they be able to give like more like diksha guru because okay do this don't do this right it's, because when we approach them with a doubt so we are approaching because we are unclear in our mind but then they leave it to is, us this is not because one is shiksha guru one is diksha guru that's because of level of your you not know, your interaction level your your uh, relationship okay so if like shri prabhapad you now when he has a very intimate relationship with some of the some of the disciples then he would be very heavy on them you no know, because he wants them to to really do things properly so but on somebody whom he has no relationship developed yet then he will be always very pleasing not getting on the on their case so that and because the diksha guru then uh, the disciple should have you no know, deep relationship that's why he can be very heavy but it doesn't limit the shiksha guru to be heavy with what he you no know, whomever he is speaking to he may be very heavy and generally again if there is a good relationship some um, you no know, so then he can be very heavy straight forward but if he is uh, you no know, speaking say uh on more like to the people he doesn't know maybe it's some class some lecture then uh he also be very careful what he speaks so then it doesn't create some uh, barrier that the people don't understand what he's trying to say and then uh you no know, dismiss him because he's trying to help the people so for that he is looking how he can get through to them so then they accept what he is saying he should not be misunderstood so it's a relationship okay thank you very much maharaj so again again maharaj we are hearing ki actually because our line is shiksha line so everything is based on sambandh that how deeper we have a sambandh so one person would be a shiksha guru for one and and just be a casual you know teacher to somebody else it all depends upon the relationship and one one feels how much surrender to that devotee is it maharaj yes you can call somebody guru as you are saying because of the relationship relationship you accept so once you accept and then you follow then you get the results thank you so much maharaj yes amit sharma prabhu you have a question yes vijay hari krishna maharaj dhanvant parana maharaj my question is related to yesterday's class that uh, we discussed just to surrender to guru we follow the paripatein sri prashtin and seva and this is cycle in this cycle the level of consciousness and faith keeps on increasing and then uh, next was you explained the example of a disciple a guru takes the test and you said that guru takes the test and uh, you uh, explained the example that uh, guru uh, asked his disciple to make the temple on that peak and all all these things you discuss so uh, Prabhu, uh, maharaj my question is ki if, uh, if we are not too much surrendered and uh, we are not able to accept such a big test or the instruction of the maharaj if he gives guru maharaj if gives so this means we are not ready to take the initiation I still will have to wait because i have doubt that i can't take such a big instruction from the maharaj to whom i am aspiring from the diksha guru yeah so basically now you have the shraddha sadhu sangha and bhajana kriya so bhajana kriya is the level when one actually i am too much entangled in this material world and i want to have one specific devotee or some specific devotees to guide me one is so much of you no know, sick of the the material entanglement that he decides okay now i'm ready before that he may not kind of like still be you no know, fully convinced and therefore he is not uh, sure whether he can follow the instructions like shri prabhupada he was giving one uh, initiation lecture 
And no, in that, no, he was saying that uh, the important thing is that one follows the instruction, but one has to also follow the prohibitions. And you know, Shri Prabhupada said that, okay, you want to take in the initiation, you are welcome. But then you have to follow the four regulative principles. If you do not follow the four regulative principles, I cannot give you shelter. And he said it twice. So the instruction always has two aspects. is the instruction and prohibition. So the guru is going to give you instruction now during the initiation, which is then 10, 16 rounds of japa minimum daily. And follow the four regulative principles. This is the minimum one has to be convinced that, okay, I can follow that. Because I don't want to let my spiritual master down. I don't want to let him down. So I take it very seriously and I make a vow that from now on, I'm going to follow this for the rest of my life. If you are ready for that, if you are, you no, know, under any circumstance, you will always follow this, that's what your vow is, then you are ready for the initiation. But if you are not ready yet, you are not sure whether you no know, some situation comes and then you no know, you may not be able to follow all the principles or then uh, chanting of the holy name or not chanting rounds. Sometimes it's okay, but when you are not inspired, you don't like it. So then uh, the readiness is not there yet. And then uh, one should uh, be in communication with, with, aspiring, you know, with, with the aspiring guru and ask, no, ask the question, what should I do? How should I do it? No, I would like to, no, I'm very much inspired by your association, but uh, I'm still not ready up to the, the task to, to make the full surrender. Please, can you help me? What can I do? And no, communicate and see it that, that way, then you develop deeper relationship with the guru. And because of that, then you will have also more strength to follow the, the instructions and the prohibitions. Because why do you follow anything, right, in your life? There are only two reasons. One is that if you don't follow, then you are afraid that something will go wrong. If I don't do this, then okay, I will get, uh, no, I will go to jail or I will uh, be punished. So there is a greater power than you have. That's why you follow. And the other thing is that uh, it's influence, it's out of affection. So you follow because your mother told you to. And if you don't follow that, she will be disappointed with you. She will not punish you. She will say, oh, I didn't expect that from you. No, you disappointed me. You don't want to hear from some, that from somebody whom you are very affectionate to or who is affectionate to you. You have a relationship. And that's, this is great fear. Actually creates a fear. I don't want to disappoint the people who have faith in me, who have no relationship with me. So that's why I will follow. So that's, we are trying to develop the relationship with our Guru to such an extent that we decide, okay, I will follow this, what he tells me for the rest of my life. Yes? Okay, Amit Prabhu, are you satisfied with the answer? Yes. 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 He says yes, Maharaj. So, okay. Maharaj, similarly, so thank you so much. One is this Diksha Guru. You're saying that we are ready if we if we think we are we have we feel inspired to chant 16 rounds all our life and follow the four regular principles. At least that is a minimum we we need, you know, to to That's think about start. Diksha. That's a start because then the relationships last. Time. Maharaj, one more thing which devotees ask and sometimes we get confused is that that uh, one can have one Diksha Guru and many Shiksha Gurus 
but also that one should not have too many shisha gurus because then we will end up confusing so would you suggest it's a good idea to have a limited number of shisha gurus and we follow them rather than asking you know too many devotees that's difficult to say you now how much is too much so for different people it will be you no know, different somebody may be you no know, very happy with uh, one or two like a deep relationships in his life have some intimate friends and then that's enough somebody you no know, he is more likely than to have uh, you no know, need like many many friends but the relationship may not be then uh, as as deep you can say because he will you no know, somebody says okay he will consult with other person with other friend then he says that and then he will say that and then the person has also the tendency to pick and choose what he likes and he said oh yeah this last this my one friend told me what i like to hear so therefore i trust him i i had seen one one case that there was a devotee brahmachari and uh, he decided he will get married he was a little elder he was in his 30s so he wanted to get married to one particular girl now that uh, and he having some you no know, faith in astrology then you now he went to an astrologer to ask whether you no know, it will be good match or not the astrologer said no way it's not good match don't do it so he said okay thank you and he went to another one so he went is another astrologer he said no that will not work no please don't do it so he said thank you and went to another one so the other one said no 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 don't do it because it will not last very long time few months and you will be you no know, separated again it will not work okay okay thank you he went to another one so and no another one the fourth one he told him well under some circumstance it's not so good but it may work oh yeah okay uh, you're the best so he wanted to he heard what he wanted to hear he got married and in no six months he was divorced it didn't work so that's the danger so when we are now accepting the shiksha from from many we have to also be able to see how is it applicable to the shiksha of shri prabhupad and not to the shiksha of the our more prominent shiksha guru we should not see that they are teaching us something else if we are perceiving that you no know, this person is telling me something else then uh, my diksha guru then it, it may not be good to actually follow same like you no know, reading too many books you no know, if we are reading book and seeing that it's saying something else than shri prabhupada's books it's too many books but if we read the same book and seeing how it's how it is conducive in our understanding of shri prabhupada's teachings how it's speaking about the same then it's good to read it so if we you know seeing somebody as a shiksha guru who is you now helping us to understand the teachings of shri prabhupada and you no know, and our understanding of of our most prominent shiksha guru then it's great it's good but if it's going to be something different then it's not good okay maharaj maharaj one question has come from sarta mata ji hari krishna maharaj i have one shiksha guru and my mind do, and my mind do not crave for any other shiksha guru or diksha guru as well is that fine so she has only a shiksha guru and no diksha guru yeah and she doesn't feel any craving for any other shiksha guru or diksha guru she feels satisfied with having a shiksha guru in her life it's fine it may be fine now for now just uh, how how it works and if he is giving you now all the instructions she needs to hear and then she follows and then she is very satisfied so it's good but you now at at some point when when the desire becomes uh, more 
more prominent and not want to be uh, more connected, then the person also, it will be good to take diksha. The diksha, it's uh, the initiation, it's very important too. Yeah. Yes, Mara. so we can we can continue with that relationship, but main thing is at one time that desire has to inculcate from within that yes. I am now ready, you know. And if you are not ready, then there is no need to push ourselves no. artificially. Then it's sadhu sangha, just association with devotees, yes. practicing the no six exchanges. That, that's fine. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Uh, so we should not rush for uh, Diksha Guru, is it? Uh, sorry? So, uh, so we should not... Uh... She's saying we should, so we should not rush for Diksha Guru, she's saying. If she doesn't feel inspired right now, so she should not Krishna. feel rushed. So we should not rush for uh, Diksha Guru as well? No. no, we should not. See. I'll give you the example. The closest example can be like a marriage, right? No. You, unless you are sure that the person is a partner for you, you know, whom you can live the whole life with, and then you, you help each other, as a Grihasta Ashram, I'm not talking about Grihamedi, I'm talking about Grihasta Ashram, then you, know, you don't go for it. Now, as you have the, yeah, so basically, you have to make sure that uh, you can fully you know, surrender. So that guru, because it's, it's a one-time, you know, one time, uh, you can do it only one time in a in lifetime. And you have to be responsible that uh, you are doing it properly with uh, utmost diligence, you can say. So unless you are sure, unless you get some inspiration, that that's what it is, that he is the person whom you can surrender to, you should not, don't, no need to rush. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, Thank can you. we take one, one last question? I know we have crossing the time. Can we take one last question? Yeah, last question, yeah. yeah last question. Maharaj, somebody is asking that we know we should have only one Diksha Guru, but if somebody has taken Diksha earlier outside ISKCON, then can he take initiation in ISKCON again? Is that is that acceptable? It is possible. Depends on it. Like say, one may have like the the Kula Guru, no, the the family Guru, no, who is giving the Diksha, and it's uh, just on like the the Vedic Diksha or like Upanayanam. No, he gets. So, taking the diksha, which is actually pancharatrik, it's higher than that. So, yeah, it's not a problem. But if we are talking about one having, say, like uh, diksha, no, in different samprada, of, like a Vaishnava samprada of pancharatrik, then uh, it, it may not be the best. It should be consulted with the guru, with both, no. Who is the, the original? Who is the aspiring to be to be guru? And if it's within the same same sampradaya, then then it's uh, not at all doable. Uh, yes, Maharaj. Mostly these questions come, Maharaj, uh, not from Vaishnav sampradaya, but from non-Vaishnav cults. You know, because there is no problem. Yeah, yes, Maharaj. there is no problem. But it's good also to inform that uh, now our our guru who we are aspiring for that about you not know, the situation but it, it's not at all thank you maharaj i think we have a fresh today but it was very good session maharaj at least many doubts got cleared and uh, we are very grateful to you maharaj for uh, this uh, enlightenment and uh, hopefully we will try to apply them and see all our shiksha gurus uh, as as, and give as much respect as we can to our Diksha Gurus also. And you explained, Maharaj, once that how externally we may, that externally we may behave differently with the Diksha Guru, but internally is the mood main is of internal. Isn't it, Maharaj? 
that for a diksha guru we may be doing immediate dandvas their pranamans and all but for a shiksha guru we may not do that but internally our respect should be see okay i'll give you just also example then you have your relationship with your mother with your father and with your friend okay so you don't you don't you deal differently with each of them you don't deal with your father as with your mother you don't deal with your friend as your mother right you you have different dealings externally it is no it's the dealings are different but internally now that uh, the affection for each of them now it's very deep but the expression may be different so and therefore now you are grateful to your friend that he is giving your time and then you can spend time together you are grateful to your mother that she is giving her time now and teaching you certain things you are grateful to your father that he is uh, not teaching you not different things than your mother so it it will be different based on the relationship but the gratefulness may be on the equal platform yes mara that's a very practical example yes that's very practical mara so thank you so very much mara to be okay. good to you and krishna billing we will uh, have your session again we will continue maharaj hari naam chantamani next weekend next weekend then yeah should be yes. all right yes maharaj thank, thank you maharaj so. okay thank you so much thank you hare krishna hare krishna prabhupad ki jai so thank you so much devotees so today evening uh, we don't have a class but i want to request you we have a online dyph uh, seminar we have not put in the groups because we were not sure how many are joining and what is happening so yesterday we had the first day which uh, ram bhadra prabhu our temple president he took the session and uh, today it will be sora prabhu and uh, who will take uh, the session and then third session who is taking third session third session is taken by nitanand ashra prabhu who taught us a bhakti vriksha training the prabhu ji will be taking the third session fourth session will be taken by rani prabhu and fifth session is being taken by divya mohan prabhu and sixth session will be taken by minakshi mata ji so i want to request you because of the there was a confusion uh, regarding loknath maharaj class today so we said no to shruta kirti prabhu so he had already made some other arrangement so we won't have a class but i want to request all of you please join that online dyps seminar and uh, give us your feedback also not not to learn but also to give that feedback because this online is a very new medium for us so your feedback and encouragement will be uh, very much appreciated so uh, please help us there so thank you so very much Hari Krishna, all glories to Shri Prabhupada. Thank you, Hari Krishna. Thank you, thank you very much.